Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, I thought it would be a good idea to get into the question of the teachings of Catholicism specifically. This time, what about fasting? According to the fourth precept of the Church, we have an obligation to fast on certain days appointed by the Church. So, the first thing we need to ask is what kinds of fasting there are, and how often we should practice them. Technically, there are three kinds, but in practice, only two are usually observed, abstinence and fasting. Abstinence means that you don't eat the meat or gravy made from mammals or birds for an entire day. Fish is allowed, though. Fasting involves eating only one full meal, as well as two smaller meals, which, put together, don't quite equal a full one, and no between-meal snacks. Water, milk, tea, coffee, and juices are all right, though, between meals and otherwise. Also, if you're not also abstaining, you may eat meat at one meal. When are these usually practiced? There used to be many fasting days, honored as disciplines of the Church. These days, it's mainly on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday that strict fasting and abstinence are required. However, abstinence from meat products on all Fridays of Lent, and all Fridays in general, is also the universal rule of the Church. Finally, there is one other fasting practice that is considered essential, and that is to not eat anything except water and medicine before receiving the Eucharist. How long before receiving the Eucharist? This is a practice that has changed a few times. At first, it was all morning until the Eucharist. Then it was limited to only three hours before receiving. Now, the official word is only one hour. There is one more thing to mention about fasting, however. Namely, that these bare minimums are certainly not all the fasting that you're allowed to do, especially if you want to make sacrifices for God. Voluntary fasting is one way to do that. Some people I know try to fast at least once a week, or to observe one of the older practices for fasting before the Eucharist, or both, and then some. Some people voluntarily abstain from meat at certain meals on certain days of the week, and that too is a sacrifice, and as long as the intention behind it is holiness and love of God, that's really awesome. While it's not exactly a competition to see who can fast the best, it never hurts to go past the bare minimum. Why would you not want to do more for God? Next time, what do Catholics need to believe? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.